Progressing now, we're going to look at where things are in the Premiere Pro user interface. So we'll start by explaining what we see in the top left of our screen. First of all, right across the top, we get our menu bar. Starting with our file button, clicking on here reveals all these different options. Now, of course, most of these options aren't going to do anything at the present time because we've not got anything involved with our project apart from setting up the first sequence. Do notice if you want to quickly close the program down, then here in the file menu right at the bottom there is the option to click on exit and the shortcut control plus Q would close the program down quickly for you. I'm not going to close it down, of course, so I'll click away. And again, moving along, then the next option is edit and pretty much all of these options are greyed out. And moving along to the third option to clip, that probably wouldn't surprise us. We have no clips involved with our project and of course everything is greyed out. And then of course moving along, sequence, marker, title, window and help. Again for the same reasons we're not really going to explore these yet. Let me just explain what predominantly takes up most of the area in the top left here. This is our source panel and allows us to monitor any of our clips once we bring them in. And we would use the source monitor when we want to assess any video or indeed any audio prior to taking it into our project and onto the timeline. In essence then, the source panel here allows us to assess and edit clips ready to be placed in our program monitor. And the program monitor is the place that displays our project as we are building it. Now you'll notice next to this source panel tab that we have other tabs too. And that's pretty much how Premiere Pro works. To save screen real estate, the same area is utilized for different panels. Clicking on a panel, this next one, for example, would allow us to check out any effect that we might have placed on our clip. At the moment, we have no clip selected. Moving along, we have an audio mixer tab. And this brings up these audio strips here. And the reason we've got three audio tracks is because when we set up our project, then the default preset that I chose established the fact that I wanted three audio tracks set up. And you'll see our audio tracks are duplicated down here in the sequence panel. Moving along once more, then we see this metadata tab as well. Let me revert back to our source monitor. Moving to the right of our screen, then here we see our program monitor. The program monitor allows us to view our project as we are assembling it. Each time we bring in a clip and perhaps we assess it in the source monitor, cut out the bits we don't want and retaining what we do want and placing the retained parts of the clip that we do want. And as we build this up using multiple clips, then here in the program monitor, we will see our project being assembled. Now, of course, we wouldn't be able to watch our project without any transport controls, and the transport controls are running here below the main program monitor. Now, moving to the bottom left of our screen, it's here that we'll see our project panel, and at the present time, we can only see our sequence that we've created. And in fact, if you roll over the sequence, you'll see a tooltip just to remind you of your project settings. And like the source monitor above, down here next to our project panel, then we also have these other tabs, the media browser, for example. And we would use the media browser, as its name indicates, to browse our hard drive, looking for the media that we want to use within our project. Moving along, we'll see an info tab where at the moment it's empty because we haven't got any assets involved yet. We have an effects tab. And it's here that we would dive in and find the particular effects that we want to use and impose on any clips that we want to impose them on. We have a markers panel and we have a history panel. Let me go back to the project panel. Now, in between this section here and the timeline section, just running vertically this strip, well, this is the tools palette. And we would click on any of these tools here for when we are building up our project. We will get to see how we use these tools as we progress. For now, let's just move over slightly to the right. And here is our sequence that we've set up. And in our timeline area here, then we'll see some tools, which we're not going to talk about just yet. We'll get to these. But we'll see down here our video tracks, video one, two, and three, set up as part of our preset. And also the related audio tracks, audio one, two, and three, plus the main master output at the bottom, the main master audio output. And well, that's pretty much it really. 
that's where things are. So for now, we're going to leave it here and talk in the next tutorial about how we can adapt the look of our user interface with something called workspaces. See you in a second.